Jason Stein from Be Mom with Style, and today I'm going to talk about our recent trip to Walt Disney World and do a trip recap for you guys. We went to Disney World in October 2017, and this is the third fall trip I believe we've gone on and gone to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. We were really super excited for Disney to invite us to go to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party this year, so thank you to them for the complimentary tickets. We had an amazing time, and we had a lot of fun dressing up. We wore family Star Wars costumes, and it's just always a great time. So overall, I'd say fall is really one of our favorite times to go. And we like Epcot during Flower and Garden. That would be like the one kind of asterisk is we really prefer Epcot during the spring at Flower and Garden. But overall, fall, with the decorations and all of the fun Halloween things is really probably one of our like whole family's favorite times to go. Now, last year we went during Christmas and I loved seeing all the holiday decorations and you know, the snow coming down in Main Street, went to the Christmas party. And I know I've been asked a couple different places, so I'll try to hit like some of the questions I've been asked a number of times on Instagram and other places. Having now been to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, which runs from like November to December, I think our whole family's preference as a whole is the Halloween party because it's just so interactive being able to go around and trick or treat and dress up in a costume. I think that's what puts it over the edge for us honestly is being able to dress up in a costume and go to Disney World. Our whole family loves that and Halloween is my husband's favorite holiday so he gets really into it. So it's really cute to see like the kids into it and him into it and it's just a really fun time. So for this Halloween, he was Han Solo, I was Princess Leia, Natalie is BB-8, and Bella was Rey. And they're like super into the forces of destiny and all those strong female characters. So I really liked that we got to incorporate that. So we drove, there was tons of firsts on this trip. We drove for the first time. So we recently moved to Alabama and we are now close enough to drive. It's like a 10 hour distance. I think it ended up taking something like 12 hours because we stop a lot. The kids constantly have to use the bathroom. Someone's always hungry. It just takes us a while. So on the way down, we split it into two days and that worked out great. We stayed in Valdosta, got in a hotel, I think at the Hampton Inn, and then drove the rest of the way in. And then we ended up going to Hollywood Studios that night. So it worked out great because we only had a few hours drive that day. We weren't too tired to go into the parks. And the way that this trip is kind of like kind of odd because I had to book this trip last minute. So if you've been following through the whole move and everything, I originally had a bounce back book for the summer. And what a bounce back means is it's the little card in your room that you call the number and you get a discount and you can go back and get a certain promotion. So I had booked that last November when we stayed at Caribbean Beach for literally the summer. Well, when I booked it, first of all, I had to change it because my husband had a project at work and then he ended up changing jobs and we ended up moving. So I had to change it like three times. And in the course of changing the dates, we had to move it to fall break, which then the bounce back was not available. It was blacked out from that time period. But being able to go during fall break so the kids didn't have to be out of school trumped being able to get that discount, if that makes sense. So um, we just lost the bounce back, which you know is a hypothetical discount anyways because you have to book something to get it. And that was fine. It ended up working out fine. So I had to make a decision, one, based on what's available and left at that point. Where do we stay and what kind of trip do I try to put together? And I had to get all new dining reservations because all those reservations I had booked from like 180 days were for the wrong month. So I basically had to do a whole trip from scratch with like a month and a half in advance. So I was able to get pretty much every single dining reservation I wanted to get. That worked out great. It just comes down to obsessively checking the website and the app. I can't tell you how many reservations I got just checking in Carline in the afternoon, like a month before our, our leaving day. So um, I was able to get Ohana, Chef Mickey's, 1900 Park Fair, Tusker House, tons of Tusker Houses. I ended up dropping about five different times to get the time we ended up wanting. Tusker House breakfast and then um, Bon Voyage. Bon Voyage was actually the toughest one because it's new 
and um, we had a really early time to start out and then like a week before we left I got a little bit later time thank goodness <laughs> and thank goodness we had our car because those early breakfast reservations worked great because we like breakfast food but we're tough to get to some days so the first day we went to Hollywood Studios I didn't make any reservations that night because I wasn't sure like how driving was gonna go and I didn't want to like be pressured to like if our drive ran long and something happened missing a reservation and it just adds stress so it was a really fun night. We ate quick service. We did the Star Wars stuff. It was really great, like kind of easing into the trip. And we watched the fireworks and then we headed back to the resort. So the first night we stayed at All Star Music. So the package that I booked was at Art of Animation, but because that first night it was a Columbus day. And for whatever reason, I called back multiple times trying to repackage that first day into our package and it just, it wouldn't go. And so I thought, well, if I'm gonna have to do a separate room only reservation, why don't we just stay at a different resort to just check another resort off of our list? So we're trying to work through as many of the resorts as possible, just to experience as many of them as possible. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to experience a resort we hadn't stayed at before. I chose All Star Music just to see what it was like. Um, I feel like we have a good handle on what the all-star resorts have to offer at this point. I do think the all-star movies is our favorite and I won't get into that because I'll save all the resort comparisons and everything for the resort specific video. But we did stay at music. It was really cute. The pool was cute. We did get to go swimming that first night because we watched the fireworks and then went back to the resort and the kids really wanted to check out the pool so we just threw on our swimsuits. I didn't even vlog it. We just threw on our swimsuits and went down and checked out the pool for like 20 minutes. And I'm glad we did because it was really fun. It closed at 10. So we like had 20 minutes of swim time and the pool closed. And then um, we packed up the next day and we loaded up our car and went over to Art of Animation. So the minute that we got to Art of Animation, my face was like this. <laughs> And by the way, this whole trip, I kept getting stopped because I wore these rose gold ears. I got stopped constantly this trip. I'll occasionally get stopped because someone's seen our videos. This trip, I got stopped constantly. They would be like, where did you get your ears? And by the way, I like your videos. <laughs> the ears were the main, like, everyone wanted to know where I got the ears. I did not get them on this trip. I had someone source them. They came into stock like in September. I got them while they were available and they got mailed to me. So I did not find them on this trip, just to put that in this video. Um, which by the time this comes out, should be almost November. They're supposed to get more in stock in November, 2017. Anyhow, a little aside. But by the time we got to Art of Animation and like the minute we got there, you know, when we saw that on the cruise line bus when we were at Disney Social Media Moms 2017 and the kids were like hanging on the side of the window because they were so interested and I thought, we need to stay at this resort. It's gonna be a good fit for us. It's got some of our favorite characters. We love like the big animation things. It's one of our favorite things about All Star Movies is it had the big Dalma Dalmatians and all that. So I thought, Art of Animation is probably where it's at for us right now. So when we got there, I was like smiling like the Grinch because I was like, this is great. I love it. It's perfect. They had all the little drawing easels. The girls immediately went over there and started drawing on those and Bella sketched her sketch which she actually entered into the sketch artist of the day con contest and won the following day. So they had all those little extras that we just really really loved and the theming was perfect for us. So the big reason I wanted to book Art of Animation is because it has the little mermaid section. So I'm going to talk about this in the resort part because I'm going to say literally everything that's in the online reviews and it's really abstract until you stay there. The section is adorable. The Little Mermaid section is adorable. The way the art of animation is, it's like a V and it's got a whole rest of the resort is suites. So it's great for large families, but if you're a family of four like us and you fit in a regular size hotel room, the suites may not be the most practical thing because you can stay at a moderate or even some of the deluxes for the same price. Um, but then the Little Mermaid rooms are the standard rooms at like a higher tier value rate and they're Little Mermaid themed. Both my girls are obsessed with Ariel right now, so I thought, we gotta stay in Little Mermaid rooms. Um, so we booked it, and all the reviews completely make sense after you stay there. It is adorable. The theming is perfect. It is really, really far away from the main building. <laughs> that is the only thing that I think would prevent us from staying in those particular rooms again, is because the first couple days it's not a big deal, but that walk by about the fifth day you've been there and sixth day you've been there, it's a long walk. Um, it's not undoable. This was the first trip we didn't have the stroller, which went okay, by the way. 
Um, but it's it's longer than our preference would be. You know, we kind of just want to get off the bus whenever we get in at night and get to our room, not traverse the whole resort getting back to our room. But the rooms were great, and I want to. I'm very interested to see when they put the Skyliner in. That's going to be running by Pop Century and by the. I think back by the Little Mermaid rooms, how that may be a game changer. Anyhow, um, we loved Art of Animation, in case you can't tell, and I'll do a whole like resort comparison and kind of review, talking about all the resorts we've stayed at so far. So um, the next day we kind of took it easy. Our second day there, we got up and we had brunch reservations at Ohana. So we just got like a quick like snack at the hotel and we also found out that day that we were invited back to Disney Social Media Moms 2018, which I was very excited about. It almost made my husband rent the car. Um, we were really excited. So that means we're going to be going on a cruise again, and we will be going back to Walt Disney World in 2018, in February. So I'll do a whole video about that. But we literally found out about that in the Art of Animation parking lot. So we went to our Ohana brunch and then came back and the girls saw the room for the first time. So there's videos of all this. And then we got ready to go to the party that night. Party, amazing. Really, really good. This was the first Halloween party I think we went to that wasn't on Halloween night, which are typically, they're, they're always sold out parties. And so the crowd was noticeably lower for us. We're used to going on Halloween night. It's sold out. It's always sold out. Um, so the crowd was great because it was a lower crowd than what we're used to for the Halloween party. We got lots done. We did lots of trigger treating. Lots of people came up to us and talked to us, talked to us about our costumes. Um, it was a really, really fun night. And the kids did really great not having the stroller. We had to take more breaks. That's to be expected. The little feet the first couple of days took some adjusting, but then once they got used to the idea of you're walking because you have no other option, <laughs> we kind of got in our rhythm. So that was a really great night. We made it until 11.30. We probably could have made it till close, but I just didn't want to push the kids too much, especially not at the beginning of the trip. So we watched the Booty You Parade. We watched the fireworks. We got the treats, which by the way, holy cow, that pumpkin cheesecake is amazing. It's the round little dome thing with Mickey on top. It's really, really good. So if you're going to a party night, pumpkin cheesecake, have availability, get it. It's really good. We also tried a couple of the other special treats, which we really liked, but my favorite was definitely the pumpkin cheesecake. So we, the way that I had it structured, I had breakfast reservations the next day, which I don't know why I do this to myself. I'm getting better, but breakfast reservations the day after a party night, um, probably not the best co combination. We were wanting to try Tusker House for breakfast. And so that worked out great because we got to try it and we have an idea of what it is now. Tusker House at lunch is still our favorite because I know I've had people ask me that. Uh, Tusker House at lunch is our favorite because we really like the food selection. The characters are great at both of the settings, the seatings, um, but lunch would be our preference between the two. So now we know. We've tried it and now we know. But because of the late party night and then we had a breakfast that morning, we did the safari, we went out to Rafiki's Planet Watch, and we got to do lots of things in the park, but the girls were just really tired. So I had scheduled our day to where we ended up in Pandora at dusk, and so we could see Pandora at night. And by five o'clock, we'd ridden the Nave River Journey, which was beautiful, and the kids really enjoyed it, even though they haven't seen Avatar, and they I don't even think they know it's a movie, to be honest with you. Um, but by five o'clock, I could tell like they were done and the adults were pretty much done. And our family, like when you hit that wall, like everyone's just going to have a meltdown. <laughs> just, I mean, that's how it is. That's just, everyone's going to have a Disney meltdown. So I could tell it was, it was coming. It was time to call it. And that is the one thing we've gotten better about is, you know, the first couple of trips, we try to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And, you know, that just wears you down. This trip and like the past couple of trips, like we know when to call it now. Like we know, okay, we're exhausted, that we're calling it. So we did, we went back to the resort, we had dinner, we went swimming, and um, you know, we had a leisurely evening and it's what we needed to do. Now at this point, I already knew we were gonna be going back to 
Walt Disney World in February. So I knew that I could make Pandora at night and Flight of Passage a priority for that time period. Um, Natalie's not tall enough for Flight of Passage. So what I probably will do is when I have my own like kind of breakout time when we're doing the group stuff and we get like a little break, they probably will just be taking us to see it, I would assume, since it's new. Um, but if they don't, I'll just use some of my free time to go do this stuff and try it out. So that's the plan for February. So that was our Animal Kingdom day. So we got rested up and then the next day was Epcot. And we, you know, I like the idea of food and wine. Like I would go around to like the little stands and try the different food and try different drinks if I didn't have kids. I really like the idea. My husband's kind of so-so on it. Uh, he's not really into the food stand thing. He just would rather sit down at a restaurant. Uh, he would probably do like the drinking thing, but like the whole like drinking around the world thing doesn't appeal to him. He just, he likes restaurants. So food and wine is not his favorite time to go. And if you watched our channel back in 2015, we had a really, really rough trip. And it was during food and wine. It was really, really hot. Epcot was really, really packed. And he didn't want to go back to Epcot ever in the fall ever again. So we devised a plan to where we did actually go last fall and we were back again this fall. And what we devised is when we're there and food and wine is going on, we will just stay out of the World Showcase. And that seems to work for the most part. Now the little addendum to that is we did take the boat over to the American Adventure so the kids could see that show and then took the boat back. It worked fine. What he just really doesn't want to do is walk around in those crowds around the whole circle and get stuck in it. And there really, there really wasn't a lot of people I saw drinking just to drink, if that makes sense, on this trip. And I think that's because of the different timing. The last trips where it's been overpacked and, um, there's been very like belligerent behavior, I don't know how else to put it, it have been that first week in November. Um, and so we would just avoid going to the World Showcase. But honestly, for our family, there's enough to do over on the intervention side, like test tracks, soaring. The kids can ride all that now. So once Natalie was tall enough to do all that, the kids love Mission Space. We just ride all the rides over there and see all the exhibits over there. And that's a whole day for us. So that worked really great. So that night we had 1900 Park Fair dinner reservations. <laughs> Super fun dinner. Like if you get the chance to do it, it's hilarious. The stepsisters are great. The kids got to dance with Cinderella and Prince Charming. It's the sweetest thing ever. It just was a really great night. I got a super sparkly drink. It had a little glowing ice cube thing in it. It was it was just a good dinner. It was really good. We all love that. My husband like requests that one. So you know it's good if he's requesting it. And um, we had really, you know, a really good time. After we got done with 1900 Park Fair, I wasn't sure whether we would go back over to Epcot or not. As I thought, well, maybe we should just call it and go rest up. And I got overruled and everyone said, nope, we're going back over to Epcot, we're going for it. And I said, okay. <laughs> So literally, like the security guard, like I think it was going to get on the monorail or something or going into Epcot was, I don't know what was said, but I was like, yep, we're heading back in against my better judgment. But it went fine. The kids did great. What we did is we usually try to split up and have like daughter date night or daughter date time with one parent or the other while we're there. So we decided to do that when we went back into Epcot. I went with Natalie and he went with Isabella because the plan was for the following day for me to have a bulk of the day with Isabella, which I'll explain later, or you've already seen in the videos. Um, and that was so fun. We were just running around, riding as many rides as we could until nine o'clock. So we're, Natalie and I were literally running up the ramp to get into Soren at like 8.58 because they closed the line at nine o'clock. And we rode Soren as the fireworks were going off. We didn't see the fireworks obviously, but the fireworks were going off. And, um, and then we headed back to the resort. So that was a really fun night because it was kind of like almost a scavenger hunt. Like see how many different rides you can ride before Epcot closes. So that was fun. We went back and got a good night's rest and then we um, 
got ready to go to Magic Kingdom the next day. Now, the next day we had breakfast reservations at Chef Mickey's. And this was the one reservation that the kids had asked for. They wanted to go to Chef Mickey's. They love this one. And they really like the assortment of the characters there and they like the food. Breakfast works great there for us. I've never tried a different meal and I just feel like breakfast is our meal there. So we were all looking forward to this one. We always get a really cute family picture there. So I have that and hopefully I can insert that. And so it was a really great meal. The characters were fun. Thank goodness we had our car with us because some of these early reservations we would not have made if we wouldn't have had our car with us. Be, and the problem, the problem is, is that when you're in the Little Mermaid rooms and you're really far out, you have to add in time literally to get over to the buses and then time to wait for the bus too. So by the time you get over there, my husband, like we went over there and he was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get the car. So um, we took the car over to the Contemporary, ate at Chef Mickey's, great meal, and then we went into Magic Kingdom and this was gonna be a shorter day for us. I had planned it that way specifically because we were leaving to go home the following day. Uh, Magic Kingdom closed at 7 p.m. that night because it was a party night and we were not going to the party that night. It's Friday the 13th actually. Um, and so I did that on purpose so we wouldn't you know, stay too late and then be tired for the drive home. The only downside is I didn't think about, we never had a chance to see Happily Ever After, the new fireworks show because the night that we were in Magic Kingdom was the Halloween fireworks. So Happily Ever After will again be on our February list to see that because we didn't get a chance to see that. But I know we'll we'll see that in February. So um, after Chef Mickey's, we had a really great time. That was the day that we had set aside for me to have basically a daughter date day with Isabella and for Dan to have a daughter date day with Natalie. I think they just went and rode bar Barnstormer like seven times or something like that. And then Isabella and I, did Sorcerer's of Magic Kingdom. So I was really excited about this and I thought she was gonna be totally into it and she was. So we ran around and did the Sorcerer's Mission in like three different lands. If you don't know what this is, watch our video. So hopefully I kind of explain it in the video, but it's a card game and you can go to the fire station and get cards for free after you you know are in the park. And each person that has a magic band can get uh, a packet of cards. They show you how to play there and everything there. One person is like the key, so I had to like unlock each portal that we get sent to. And like you have to use different spells to like defeat the villains and then it tells you which portal to go to next and you just run around and complete it. She was so into it. She was so into it, it was adorable. So I'm gonna get her a little card case to put all her little cards in so she can bring them back for next time. We met so many nice people doing this game. There were so many nice people. People were just like handing her cards. And she didn't really get it at first because like she got the trading because she's done pin trading before. And so she was trading people at first and then people would see like she's new to it and they try to give her cards and she's like, no, I can't take them. <laughs> so, um, you know, she got some things given. A couple people were just like, here, take them <laughs> to me. Um, but so many nice people were playing this game. So it's a really neat thing. Like if you've been to Disney Magic Kingdom a lot and you're just looking for something for like your tween to do that's a little bit different and kind of out of the box, this game is so fun. It's really neat for them. They're running around, they're doing the missions. It was adorable. And I saw like so many kids doing it and then like they'd cross each other's paths, like going to the next portal and be like, hey. So, so many nice people. Thank you so much. If you were one of the people that came up to us and gave us cards and you see this video, thank you so much. We ended up with, like, you start out with six cards per person. And we ended up with a stack of cards like this. Uh, it's so many nice people we met. So, thank you so much. And we're hoping to pay that forward so when we go back. I'm going to get her a little card case and then we'll just hand out our extras to people when we, you know, go back and do it. So we spent the majority of the day finishing up playing Sorcerers and Magic Kingdom and then we left that evening and went back to our resort and we got to meet up with some of our friends that live down there in Florida. Jessica S, her channel is AS3RD23 and I'll link her down below. She has two girls and we all love getting together. The girls have such a good time and they got to play and hang out. They went swimming. So we had a really great time. I didn't vlog it, but I have vlogged other times when we met up with her. So I'll link those down below. You guys should go check out her channel. She loves Disney as well. 
and it's just amazing. Like our girls get along so well. I just need to move a little bit closer. It's just getting closer and closer, Jessica. It's a little bit further to go. Um, honestly, they're like they're adorable together. Like they're just have such a great time, and we have so much fun with them. So we had a really great night swimming and hanging out with them, going to get something to eat, and. Um, it's just so fun to like see them in Disney and like Disney is their play place. So we had a great time. And so we've met up with them now at Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and then they've got to hang out at the resort. So now we just need to go to Animal Kingdom and we've gotten checked everything off the list. We've got the whole trifecta there. So um, that was what we did that night. It was super fun and a great way to end the evening. The next morning we got up and we went to Bon Voyage Adventure Breakfast and that's at the boardwalk. It had Ariel and Rapunzel and Eric and Flynn. And I really wanted to book this breakfast because the girls are really into Ariel and Rapunzel. Those are their two favorites right now. And they really love interacting with the princess too. So I thought that this would be a great one for us. We had a really great time. The characters were super fun, especially Flynn. And um, it was really cute. The girls enjoyed seeing the characters and they got, did went around into a little parade. The girls love when they have parades like that. The food selection is probably not as the most geared towards us, I think, as some other meals would be. Um, on the menu, it had things like steak and eggs and, like, I think different omelets and stuff like that. Everyone at our table ended up ordering pancakes. The pancakes were really good. I really liked, um, I had the tower pancakes and I had the Rapunzel sun on the top. And so it was really cute also, and they liked the pastries as well. But I think food-wise, something like a Chef Mickey's is probably a better fit for us because that assortment of food works better for our whole family. I didn't feel like the things on the menu quite fit our family 100%, so it's probably not one that we'll necessarily repeat a lot, but I'm definitely glad that we did it once. And I would have loved, they only do the character meal during breakfast time. I would have loved to like try like lunch food there um, because that probably would have been a better food fit for us, but it doesn't exist as a character meal. They do serve lunch and dinner there, but it's just a regular restaurant. And so if you want the character meal, you need to go to breakfast. Um, but the food was good. It just wasn't the best fit for our family. So something like a Chef Mickey's or that kind of assortment, you know, just like regular scrambled eggs, bacon, you know, we're, we're pretty basic as far as breakfast food goes, but breakfast food works really well for us. Ohana works really great for us as well. Um, but it was a really fun meal and we enjoyed it. So I'm glad we did it once. I think we did a princess meal in the future. 1900 Park Fair at Cinderella, of course, but for at dinner time. Um, but that's just, it's one of my husband's favorites too. It's just funny and fun and interactive. Um, probably Acre Haas at lunch would be our pick over Bon Voyage for breakfast. And then I really like Cinderella's Royal Table eating inside the castle. My husband doesn't like the cost of it, um, but I really like the ambiance. But probably if we had to pick one princess meal out of Cinderella's Royal Table, Acre Haas, or the Bon Voyage, we'd pick Acre Haas lunch. And I, the reason I'm excluding 1900 Park Fair from that is I don't feel like that's purely just a princess meal. It's a totally different experience to us. So I definitely recommend 1900 Park Fair for dinner. And if I had to choose one princess meal, it would probably be Acre Haas. As far as breakfast, probably Chef Mickey's or Ohana. So all in all, it was a wonderful trip. I'm gonna do a souvenir haul. The girls, we stopped at All Star Music on the way out because the girls saw these little babies that they wanted. And it was the only place that had both of them, both varieties that they were wanting. So we stopped there on the way out and got those. And, um, and then we drove home and we did it all in one day on the way back, which was okay. I think if we fine tuned it a little bit and went a slightly different route, it would work. So we're still working out the, you know, the kinks of being a little bit closer and being able to drive, but work, what works best. Um, splitting it up into two parts was good because you're not as tired, but then you essentially lose a day too. So, you know, you have to balance it all out. For our February trip, because we're gonna be kind of more constricted on time, we are planning on flying for that one, and so that's the plan for that one. When it's like a school break and it hits a weekend to a weekend, we'll probably drive, and I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it in a long weekend. It's just a little bit too far. If we were like 
two hours or three hours closer. It'd be, you know, long weekend doable. I don't know if it's that close yet, but we'll see what happens in the future. So that's our trip recap. I mean, it was a really great trip. We really loved Art of Animation. I'm gonna be talking more about the resorts in a separate video. I'm not gonna do a separate food recap. All the food stuff that we did this time was really good. Um, so, I mean, just all around great reservations that we had this time. We had good character interactions. It was hot, but not as hot as that November 2015 trip. And um, just all around a really great trip. I think knowing when to say when and taking breaks is really key. And then this was our first trip without the stroller. That went good. Um, we did have a little bit of, you know, like my feet hurt, I want to stop, I need to take a break. But we just, we would. We would just stop and take a break and, and you know, give their feet a rest. Natalie did get a little blister on the top of her foot from her shoe rubbing from so much, so much walking. Um, but other than that, there was no real hiccups with it and I we will continue to go without a stroller. Um, I think this trip proved out that we can do it. And for like the February trip, that one's definitely doable because that's such short spurts and then sometimes we have to get on buses and go to family events that then it's totally doable. So that was our trip in a nutshell. I hope you guys really enjoyed the videos. If I can answer any other questions about our trip or experiences, please let me know down below. I'd be happy to help out. And um, yeah, I was really happy with all the dining reservations that I made. I thought it was a great selection. Really loved Art of Animation. Would love to stay there again so that Isabella can do the drawing classes. They had drawing classes at three different times. But we never made it over there to do it because I didn't have it worked into our schedule. So if I could stay there even like as our fill-in like one night and then we stay somewhere else the rest of the trip if we do a split stay um, so she could do those drawing classes, that would be awesome. So that's definitely a goal for the future. And then, you know, other than that, the days, how I had it laid out, worked out really well. We liked hitting the party at the beginning of the week, so we weren't tired out, you know, so tired out and then had to do a long party night at the end of the week. And also, not going into the park during the day of our party really works out for us so we're not overtired. So that was our trip in a nutshell. It was a really good family vacation. We had a great time. We're really looking forward to being back for Disney Social Media Moms 2018 and February. Land and sea, we're gonna be back on the Disney dream. Our family loves to cruise. You're definitely gonna see some longer cruises out of us very soon because we are definitely a cruising family. I love it, it's so relaxing. So that is that in a nutshell and I will be following up with a souvenir haul and also a resort recap as well. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.